I started an Instagram account two years ago, two years ago called Accidentally Wes Anderson. And over the course of two years, we grew a global community of more than 800,000 people. Okay? We have some great metrics, we have some awesome uh, interactions, some engagements, but the two numbers that mean the most to me are those bottom two facts. Okay? More than 104,000 uses of our hashtag, number one, and number two, more than 3,000 monthly submissions, meaning that people email us and submit their photos through our formalized process more than 3,000 times a month. That means that people have gone from liking, following, et cetera, the baseline beginning of Instagram, and they've gone further. They've actually begun to engage, okay? So how did we get there? Well, let's dive into it. I'm Wally Koval, very nice to meet you. I live in Brooklyn with my beautiful wife, Amanda. She's down here in the front, live tweeting. She's not live tweeting, but maybe she will. <laughs> and our very cute puppy, Dexter. He's here for two reasons. He'll come back into play in a minute, but also for 2.50 in the afternoon on a Thursday. I think we need a cute puppy. <laughs> now, the story of AWA. How did all of this begin? Well, AWA began as most wonderful stories do, on the front page of the internet, Reddit. Wally Koval, that's me, was browsing, eating his salad one day, and he came across some beautiful photos. These photos look as though they had been plucked from a Wes Anderson film. Well, I, an avid Wes Anderson fan, said, no, that's not true, because I've seen all of them, and I've never seen these. These were real life locations, OK? And as an avid traveler, I'm thinking, I'd love to go to these places. These sound, oh, these look amazing, these are beautiful. But as I looked further, there's no background, there's no history, there's no credit to the photographer, which irked me personally a little bit. But most of all, there was no context, okay? Literally, look at the title of this one, it says bus in Ukraine. The only way to get more vague than that is maybe vehicle in country, I don't know. <laughs> There's no way to find out where that is. So if I want to put this in my travel bucket list, I have to be an avid Googler, which I also am. Google me. I'm a top Googler. I'm not. Don't. So what I was hoping to find was a compilation of these places so that when Amanda and I were like, where are we going to go next? I could be like, I don't know, maybe one of these cool places. Unfortunately, it didn't exist, so I made one. I started gathering these photos. I started gathering from Reddit from Instagram, et cetera, and I started putting them on Instagram. Well, why Instagram, though? Well, two reasons. Number one, remember that super cute puppy? He is a semi-retired pup fluencer, OK? I despise the, what the word influencer has become, but pup fluencer is a lot cuter than that. So I figure it works, right? But in, in reality, Amanda and I had got a really cute puppy four years ago. And just like everyone and their mother, we created a puppy account for him, right? But we had grown that account to 12,000 followers, and we thought that was out of this world unbelievable. We just thought it was in, in, incredible. And you're saying, OK, Wally, that's cool. You, you had a puppy, and he got, cool, that's great. I don't have any experience with Instagram. Well, if you don't, why should you be on Instagram? Well, if you're on Instagram, if you're, if you're not on Instagram, rather, if you dive into content that maybe you're looking at a newsletter or a website or maybe a blog, OK, you have literally one perspective. You're looking directly at the content as the author meant for you to see it. But Instagram is a treasure trove of information, OK? You have literally thousands of different perspectives. You can click on a hashtag, or you can click on the location and literally see how many people had taken photos of that place, no matter where they were. That's fine. It doesn't have to just be travel, right? At the bottom there, you have context via hashtags. You click on them, and through those captions, you can start to form a bigger picture. You can start to create your own story and actually understand what really was going on. So I began my solo adventure. This is me in Florida, June 9, 2017. No followers, just me and my blimp. Just me and my idea, hanging out, OK? And I started to add context and continuity to these photos. We would gather them again. When I say we in the beginning, it was just me, but I like we. We would gather them from Instagram, from Reddit. We would do some, some Googling, diving into the content and figuring out what it was. And we would post it to our Instagram account with ample credit, I might add. But we weren't just adding this, posting pretty pictures, OK? We were adding what it was, what it was, where it was, and when it was built. And then we were sprinkling in 
a little bit of hashtags for context and so other people could find this. And people seemed to like it. People seemed to engage with it. People were excited about it. And early growth was slow. But then again, I wasn't setting out to necessarily create growth. I was literally going around trying to find a way to build this travel bucket list, right? So those 112 people, they were awesome. We engaged left and right. We're commenting back and forth. We're DMing. I still talk to a lot of these people, which is weird to think about that I talk to people that I met on Instagram two years later, but I do. It's fine. But this was that core group. This was that core group that we were looking for. We're truly engaging with them, right? So I think if these guys are the core group, what else might be out there, right? What other pieces of information, what other travel tidbits could we be gathering from a larger group? So how do we get into that larger group? How do we attract them? So I dive in. I start rewatching Wes Anderson films to get that aesthetic, right? I resubscribe to travel magazines, Condé Nast Traveler, architectural design, not just for the free tote bags, although yes, but to embody that content, okay? I wanted to get in, I, I wanted to know what I was putting out there. And you could be saying, okay, cool, Wally, that's great. You like Wes Anderson, you like travel, that's fantastic, but I'm putting Instagram content together for a marketing AI company. What does this have to do with me? Well, the exact same principles apply. If you're gonna speak to an audience, if you're gonna gather an audience, if you're gonna try to speak through Instagram, through another medium to that audience, you have to understand your content. You have to embody that content. So that's what I was trying to do. I continued to post on a daily basis, every single day, every single day, between 7 and 10 a.m. Eastern, I posted. And that core group of 112 started to comment a little bit. But I thought, why don't I elicit a little bit of this, com of this conversation and kind of get it going a little more. Let's get it, let's, let's, let's pick this up a little. And I posted at the bottom of every one moving forward, I put no more, comment below. People were already doing it, why not ask them? And the crazy part was that they actually did. And the content began to evolve. The content began to evolve through this photo right here, okay? We're a month in. Alexandra Connex underscore had no idea what her two comments were about to do, okay? They were about to change the trajectory of accidentally Wes Anderson for the better, okay? I'll read them verbatim. Alexandra Connex underscore said, ah, I love it. I wanna be there, three heart eye emojis. She was so excited, she commented too soon. She had more to say, she said. Can you do also their stories or like fun facts, LOL? I love this account. Well, Alexandra Connex underscore, you are in luck, my friend, because I dove in a little bit further. And I found that this awesome building, hundreds of years ago, used to be the residence of Italian kings, okay? Fast forward through today, the building's now a hospital for children with asthmatic disorders. Why? Because of the altitude at which it sits, it makes it easier for them to breathe. Okay, I'm going crazy. I'm like, okay, this place was Italian Kings and now accidentally over the years became what it is today. How many of these stories have I missed? How many of these stories are there moving forward? What else can we find? So now we have the next evolution of this content, right? We had the raw materials. We had the, the photos on Reddit and Instagram without any context. Now we sprinkle a little hashtags in, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have real stories. This is that next evolution. So we continue to go. We continue every single night from there on after. I'm looking into these photos, 25, 35, 45 minutes a night. And I'm looking for interesting stories. And I'm finding them. And I'm posting them. And people are engaging with it. And we've grown. Almost 1,300 followers. That's crazy. And then we have a bit of a reality check. One morning, I wake up to three, four, five hundred new followers that I hadn't had before I went to bed. Amy Royland, a, a fashion nerd is her handle. Um, she is a, a, a fashion, I don't like the word influencer, but she's a fashion blogger and Instagrammer, let's put that. She had reposted one of our photos and she said, I love this account, her peeps, 120 some thousand were like, ooh, I kind of like that too. And they came on board and they were engaging just the same. And it was really exciting. Then I wake up two weeks later with this subject, hi from Vogue. And I'm thinking this is the weirdest beginning to a Nigerian prince email scam I have ever <laughs> heard, right? But luckily it wasn't. 
It was Christina Perez. Christina was a writer for the online version of Vogue, and she said, I'd love to interview you. I found you through uh, Amy's profile. I also saw what's going on on Reddit. I love what you're doing with this content. Can I interview? Yes, it's super exciting. I'm, I'm going nuts. This is awesome. I've never been interviewed by Vogue. So she does the interview. Two weeks later, she publishes the interview, and it blows up. And overnight, we went from 22, 2300 followers to almost 15, 16,000 followers. We're bigger than Dexter, ladies and gentlemen. We're bigger than Dexter, OK? We are bigger than Dexter. And that's awesome. And I'm on the phone with Amanda. I was in San Francisco at the time. I'm like, holy moly. I didn't say moly, but you get the picture. And I'm like, We're, that's insane. That's insane growth. We thought 12,000 was insane. What about 15, 16? This is nuts. Then I take a step back, and I'm thinking, OK, we just grew significantly. That's great. That's all well and good for the numbers. But this is a community, OK? We had a couple thousand people. That was our core 112, right, who we were conversing with back and forth, having those conversations, sharing stories about travel. How is this large influx of people going to affect us? How is this going to affect the engagement and the community that we've tried to cultivate? Luckily. They liked it. Luckily, they stuck around. And I say luckily, but it wasn't luckily, OK? It was because we had put specific principles in place and created a foundation of content that people knew what to expect. Every single day, between 7 AM and 10 AM Eastern, guess who was posting interesting, quality content? Us. So when they came in the door and they peeked around, and they were like, OK, I know what to expect. I'll, I'll, I'll hang out for a while. And they did. And they engaged, and people continued to come along. So now we've grown significantly, thanks to more earned media, but thanks to everybody sharing this content. People were really engaged with it. We were doing something a little different than what was typically done on Instagram, which is cute puppies, right? Or whatever. I'm not going to call anything out. But we were doing something a little bit different. Now we have a responsibility to this community, OK? We now have to understand that community, how they work, and we also need to maximize this medium. You should never build on rented land. We all know that that's like content marketing commandment number one, right? But when you find yourself in this position, you need to make the most of it. And when you find yourself wanting to uh, potentially supplement the content that you're utilizing, and you want to use one of these mediums, you, you try to maximize it, right? And I'm finding that a lot of these photos that we're posting are falling flat. I'm not, not quite sure why. So I look into it a little bit, and obviously we all find that, yeah, of course, OK? On average, people consume co content on their mobile device quicker. I get it. That's common sense. But that number at the bottom really hit me, right? People are consuming our content with 0.25 seconds of exposure, right? So that means that my 45 minutes, my 45 minutes of kind of digging in and looking at this content, I'm super pumped about, people are taking their phone, and they're just going like this at lunch when they're waiting for their salad, right? That's how they're consuming our content. So we need to, A, be the most critical consumers of our content. We need to consume the content exactly how they would. Instead of putting it up on our screen and being like, this is, a great, this is going to be a great post. This is going to be awesome. I put it on my phone, and I literally just started doing that. And Amanda came in the room, and she's like, are you OK? Do I need to call the doctor? And I said, no, it's fine. I just started doing this split second check, literally how someone else might see that, that, that content, right? And so we made some changes. We, we, we tweaked some things. And it continued to grow even more after those changes. And from there, we formalized. We put on our big boy bow tie, OK? We, we started to formalize this submission process. We started to allow people to submit their own photos. People were very excited when we featured their content. They were very ecstatic. That brought us to another level. We started gathering some email addresses. We started putting a website together. We never expected to be here, but we built as we went. We kind of figured it out along the way. So you don't necessarily need to know where you're going to be to just start picking up the pieces and put a couple bricks down. You can figure it out as you go.